In this video, we're going to go through a CFA level one exam style question on applying the FIFO method. That's first in, first out to the valuation of inventory. FIFO is, I guess, the most commonly applied so-called cost flow assumption. Uh, you need to know how these assumptions work, not just FIFO, but also LIFO and AFCO, which ones are allowed under IFRS. Uh, and which are which which are prohibited, obviously US GAAP as well. So what I'm going to do now is devote the next couple of questions, which will run in a series to inventory valuation concepts with a particular emphasis on cost flow assumptions, starting with FIFO. If this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is our question. A company records the following transactions in a particular line of inventory over the course of December. And as you can see, over the four days mentioned here, it makes purchases, it makes sales, obviously of different amounts of units and at different prices. Now, assuming the company uses the FIFO method, first in, first out, and maintains a periodic inventory system, which is also important, what is its gross profit for the month of December and closing inventory balance as at the 31st of December in respect of the inventory line described above? And we've got two um, columns and three possible answers. Okay. Let's start by saying what we actually mean by periodic inventory system. Let me write this down. A periodic inventory system and later on, in a different question, I'll show you how we maintain or how things become different when we're operating under the assumption of a perpetual inventory system. But a periodic inventory system is one where we periodically, so from time to time, typically at the end of the period, like a month, I guess, in this case, we periodically determine the amount of inventory. And we don't do this on a continuous uh, basis inventory. Okay, right. What you need to do, well, let me start maybe by stating something very obvious. There is more than one way to solve this question. There's actually multiple ways to do it. Uh, I'm going to show you the way which is proposed by the curriculum and which if you follow it, you'll for sure get this right. But it's absolutely fine in the exam to make certain shortcuts to do whatever works for you. So let me give you the sort of the official version. What we're going to do is first of all, count the number of units which were purchased and which were sold. So purchased, we had 70 units from the 1st of December and then another 70 units from the 13th of December. So 70 and 70, that gives 140 units. What about the number of units that were sold? Okay, on the 4th of December, 20 units were sold, and then another 60 were sold later on towards the end of the month. So that's 20 and 60, giving 80 units. Brilliant. Well, how am I going to use this? I'm going to calculate the amount of ending or closing inventory. So ending inventory was the difference between what was purchased and what was sold. And you could say, well, what if this company had some units already within inventory to start with? Well, if that was the case, the examiner would have given you that information as part of the question, seeing as they don't, or seeing as they haven't, you must assume that starting inventory at the beginning of um, the month or the relevant period was nil. Make that assumption and life becomes much easier. Um, in light of the information we're providing here, that's the only sensible assumption we can make. So ending inventory is going to be the difference between what was purchased, 140 units, and what was sold, the 80, and that gives 60 units. Now, under the FIFO assumption, first in, first out, what that basically means is the units leaving the company are first of all, the ones that were purchased first, so the longest time ago. Uh, 
and therefore what ends up being in inventory at the end of the period are going to be those units which were purchased relatively close to the date, so recently. So the most recently purchased 60 units are still going to be within ending inventory because the oldest, the ones coming from the earlier deliveries must have already been sold under the first in first out assumption. Okay, well, if there are 60 units left within inventory, they must all have come from this delivery, the delivery from the 13th of December, when the company purchased 70 units at 58 per unit. So times 58 over here. Let's see what this gives. I'm taking out my calculator and you can easily perform this computation as well. 3,480, and this is in dollars. So that's going to be our closing inventory balance. And just, you know, just in case, because you may be asked such a question in the exam, a company that follows the FIFO method first in, first out, in terms of displaying its closing inventory balance, what ends up being shown in the balance sheet? Well, this value is going to be based on the most recent prices at which purchases, fresh purchases were made. So this is going to be, and generally that's the assumption you need to make, reflective of the prices of inventory right now. So reflective of current replacement cost. That's one of the benefits of using the FIFO method. What you show in the balance sheet is pretty close to the current cost of replacing those inventory items. Okay. So I know closing inventory balance is 3,480, which limits the choice of answers to A or B. Let's now figure out the gross profit in order to compute this well and this is where you can absolutely follow one of a number of ways what i'm going to do is say what were the total goods available for sale i mean what was potentially available to be sold and that was obviously the purchased 70 units at a price of 53 but also the next 70 units which were purchased at 58 that was the total value of units which were overall available to be um to be sold let's see 70 times 53 okay that's 3710 and to this i'm going to add 70 times 58 that gives me an overall amount of so this should be 58. I know it's not looking like a 58 right now, so let me make it clear that this is 58. Um, this gives me a total amount of 7,770. That's the value, total value of units which were in aggregate available to be sold. We know, therefore, or we're able, we're in a position to calculate the cost of sales here. Cost of sales. That's the value of the units which went to the clients, which were used up to service the sales. That's going to be the difference between what was available to be sold, 7,770, and what's sitting in closing inventory or ending inventory at the end of the period following the sales that were or have actually been made. Obviously, you could calculate cost of sales differently by looking at the various items and various items of sales and calculating what the cost would be relative to each one. But this is, I think, a, you know, a very safe method and it's one which is also advocated by your curriculum. So let me do 7,770 minus 3480. Okay, this gives a value of 4,290. And by all means, if you do want to, you can, you know, apply one of the other methods, which you may find more intuitive to calculate the cost of sales within the, um, within the constraints of this scenario. And you should get the same answer if you're following the periodic inventory system. We're obviously assuming that 
what went to clients, what was sold, and what was sold in total was 80 units, must have come initially from the earliest deliveries to the extent possible, and then a further uh, 10 units out of those 80 sold must have come from the units that were purchased later on uh, at a slightly higher price. Now, I've got my cost of sales. I can therefore calculate the gross profit, which is what we're being asked about here. So let's contrast sales revenue. You need sales revenue to compute the profit. Um, and that's, well, what is it? Sells 20 units at 62 and then sells another 60 units at 63. Okay. 20 units at a price of 62 each and then a further 60 units at a price of 63. Let's see what this gives. 20 times 62 plus 60 times 63. Okay. I see an answer of $5,000 and 20 and from this we deduct so minus the cost of sales which has already been computed up here this is 4290 so let's make this appear down here directly below and let's therefore check what the gross profit is for this company in the period of december gross profit is obviously the difference. 5,020 minus 4,290, dollars Let's check the answers. This will correspond very nicely with answer A. Obviously, in conjunction and in combination with the closing inventory balance, which we know should be 3,480, we are looking indeed at answer A.